Um, it's not having what you want, it's wanting what you've got. My dad is famous. My, I'm going to share with you my dad's famous quote. I was in high school, and my mom and I were being super catty about the day. And dad, my dad was like, ladies, ladies. Remember I told you this patient, awesome man? He's like, ladies, 10 things happened today. Nine were good, one was bad. And you dwell on the same one day all day long. <laughs> and I was like, so true. He said, what about the other nine things? What about the other nine great things? Why do you only focus on the one bad thing? And I was like, oh man, we totally do that. And so I want to take that awesome advice and apply it to beast. You have 10 things about your body, features, assets. We're pretending you have 10. You actually have like a million, but we'll go with 10. Your, your nine of them are beautiful and awesome, and you hate one of them, get over it. We all have cellulite, it's okay, right? I mean, I want you guys to be okay with the fact that whenever, you know, you have curly hair, you have straight hair, have you guys ever brought a picture into your hair stylist and be like, I want this? And he's like, oh, oh, it's so funny. He had a little, he had a little card that said, I'm a, it was so funny, it was like, I'm a beautician, not a magician. That's what it said. And I was like, so what is the point? I mean, we have this beautiful body that God gave us. And, you know, there's so many things that we could go in forever about why do we dwell on the one? When I, if I told you guys, if I stood up here and I said, you're beautiful, you're lovely, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, if I, I could go on for like an hour, and you would all, it would be in one ear and out the other. Why? Because you don't believe it. I could just, I could keep going, I really could, and all in truth, and you just don't believe it. And the reason why is because we all have wounds. We all have hurts. It may have been something that your dad said, or your dad didn't say, or something that the, the pressure to be perfect, maybe from your mom or someone in your life. Maybe it was something that a boyfriend said. There was a girl that I mentored, and she had a boyfriend call her fat when she was 14. She never, ever let it go. Never, ever got over it, and it really destroyed her image of herself. I can kick that boy, right? But it took us a good two years to convince her and to build her back up that she was beautiful. Are you guys following me? If the, I mean, Jason Everett says that looking in the mirror can be an abusive relationship. Is that not true? Like, looking in the mirror becomes an abusive relationship. And so when you think about all of this, you know, all those insecurities, whatever it is about when you, when you look in the mirror, whatever that is, when we start beating ourselves up, we have to know, okay, we've named this, we've claimed this, we're ready to fight against this. And the, wor the worst thing we could do, the number one with my true sisterhood, we compete and compare like nobody's business. Have you guys ever laughed at guys where they like get all macho trying to size one another up and we're like, stop. You know what I mean? Like we're all laughing at them and you're like, you've got to be serious. How many of you think women are worse? Competing. Everyone put your hands up. We could do a clinic on competing and comparing, right? It's awful. One of the things that I found most interesting is whenever we compare ourselves to Hollywood, you know, we look at, you know, I love, you know, like Kate Hudson or Anne Hathaway, and we look at them and we're like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. And then it's like, well, it's okay because they have multi million dollar wardrobes, they have airbrushing on their side, and they have stylists, right? So it's okay. I don't have to compete with that. There's kind of a safety net there. But what happens in our everyday life? Not Hollywood, but typically, where do we go? And all of a sudden, the competition flares up and the comparing flares up. We've already talked about it before. Facebook. Facebook is one of the leading causes of female depression, statistically, right now. What do we do? No one's talking about it. You get on someone's Facebook page and you look at her perfect life, quote unquote. You look at her body, her perfect body, her perfect boyfriend, her perfect grades, her perfect sports, her perfect, you name it. As moms, you, know, you look and you're like, she's so organized. She has time to run. She has time to run for office. She has time to, you name it, right? Oh, they went on a lovely $8,000 vacation. Awesome. Pictures, 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 right? Like, it's all just a bunch of competing and comparing. And all of a sudden, we walk away from her Facebook page. And typically, we have two reactions, anger or worthlessness. We either take it out on ourselves or we take it out on them. And the next time you see that woman, that relationship has changed. All because we are so worried about all that competing and comparing. 
So we look at that and we have to say to ourselves, like one girl said to me, when I think about what my insecurities are, I just like, I get anxious. And I was like, that's a gift of the Holy Spirit because that means that he's willing inside of you something to, you're gaining knowledge about yourself to fight it. So when it comes to body image and confidence and all of that, I'm getting to the end of my talk, and I know I told you like I, I could be here for eight hours, right? So, and I talk fast on top of that, and I still could be here for eight hours. When you think about all of those wounds, when you think about those insecurities, we have to do battle against it, because what do we typically do? We stuff our stuff. We push it down, and we're like, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. But it is super affecting you. And the worst thing that we can do is pretend like it's not there. Nod your head up and down if you're following me. Okay, so it's not having what you want, it's wanting what you've got, and forget your flaws, flaunt your assets, modestly, of course. I get a little worried when I say flaunt your assets without putting the modestly thing in there. So what do I mean? If you love, okay, the one thing that you love and you hate nine things and you love one, let's try, first let's try to swap it. And second, if you love like the fact that, promise me you can come up with two or three things that you love about yourself, flaunt it. You know, like the girl with the red hair. It's like, quit straightening your hair. It's beautiful. She has to want what she's got. Do you guys follow me? Like that, just embrace who you are. And that's one of my favorite things is because it just, it's so great. The other thing, the reason why we have to embrace modesty is because we have to protect our men. Modesty, I always say, when women dress to the nines, everybody, or you know, dress it up, a lot of people are like, oh, she's trying to get a guy. It's like, no, she's just trying to compete with other women. Guys are like, oh, she looks good for me. It's like, no, she's trying to top her best friend. Right? So when you guys dress, a lot of times you're dressing to, like, be cute, be fashionable, which, like, I'm all about. Obviously, I'm not Debbie Downer. I'm, you know, like, we got, we're with, I'm with you, right? My fashion Pinterest pen board is loaded. Like, I'm with you. But the problem is, is sometimes we're so busy competing with other women or feeling insecurities about ourselves and trying to, to push down the insecurity and just, like, you know, physically try to show off more to feel better about ourselves, that we forget that the men are there, that the men are around. Okay, so I said, you know, we are attracted and turned on by our ears. What are the guys attracted? What are they, what, what? Eyes, right? So the guys are watching all this, um, you know, the blowing up cars and nudity, and like they watch that three times, and then you walk by, okay, and you walk by half naked. Does everyone see the problem here? Because, you know, emotionally you're like, I want him. And they're like, I want her. Okay, everyone nod your head up and down, you're following this. Okay, so the point is, is that we have to be in touch with the idea that, oh my gosh, like, not only am I not going to dress to compete with other women because that just tears down our friendships and myself, but I need to dress to inspire love because if I don't, if I just keep this up, a lot of my guy friends are going to struggle. How many of you guys, I mean, I know they got on your nerves. High school boys can be a little immature. College boys a little better. But they're still moving. They're still working on it. But we love those guys. Like, we love them. Like, I have so many men in my life. I think having two younger brothers really helps. But I love those guys. And when I think about the fact that every guy out there is someone's little brother or someone's son or someone's best friend or someone's whatever, like, I would never want to, to make some man struggle more with lust because of me. That fight is hard enough. I sat up one time with 12 guys, college guys, and I had a piece of paper and I said, tell me everything that turns you on. It took three hours. And I took that list and I have a talk called Don't Shoot the Messenger. And I go through the entire list of what they told me turns them on with women. I go through the whole list because it's so important. And these are like awesome, decent guys. They're not like creepers, they're not pervs. They're really great guys. And they went through this whole list of what turns them on. Bare shoulders, collarbones, shoulder blades. If you sit down in a chair with a, with a strapless dress on, they you look naked from the back. So even in church, they're like, church is awful. If there's girls sitting in front of me with like nothing on, I'm thinking about naked girls during church. They're like, it's awful. I mean, they have like agony on their face, you know? And they'll see a girl like with a really short skirt and they're like, oh my gosh, her, her skirt is so short, I could probably see her underwear. Oh great, now I'm thinking about her underwear, right? Like, no, I'm serious, the guys had a whole list. They told me, they are like, if I walked into a locker room and there were a bunch of women in their underwear and bras, I would like scream and run out and the women would scream and run out. But yet, like bathing suits are less than that and women like parade around in them and it's like a fashion statement. Okay, college men told me this. Not Debbie Downer, 
college men. You know, leggings are not pants, people. Leggings are not pants. They were like, who thought that was a good idea, right? So the guys come to me and they say, or like, they always say like, um, formal events. They're like, why is it that when there's like a wedding or a prom or a dance or anything like that, everybody like, like the dresses just get smaller and smaller and smaller. Like, why is it that the dress, like prom or whatever, it's like, it's like a skin fest. I feel like I can't handle it. Okay, again, three hours with 12 college guys, and I had a ton of info from that, and they were just really brutally honest with me. And I came back and put together this talk, and the women were just like, whoa. Like, I never thought, like, you know, especially me, when, when I was in high school, when I was in college, I came into my faith and kind of got this memo, and it was just like, oh my gosh, like, there's just a feeling of, I, I would never want my good guy friends. You don't even have to think of me that way.